Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome, welcome. My name is Lauren and I am a women's wear designer with a collection called Lauren Michelle. I make videos where I share a little bit of my experience from my perspective and just some of the tips and tricks that I have learned along the way. I've been making videos about my process, but recently I have been getting questions about my process as a whole and what that looks like. So I thought that I would sit down and quickly talk about a zoomed out look of what I actually do. Obviously, I can only share my viewpoint, but in general, this is kind of what the process is. What I'm explaining right now is how to take ideas from just a concept to something that actually uh, my customers get in the mail directly from me or they are able to shop from a rack in a boutique. So first I make a mood board. Hopefully you guys have watched that video. If not, go through my videos and check out how to make a mood board. But after I make the mood board, I decide from there what it is I'm actually going to be designing. Maybe I'll do some sketching and I'll think about how I want to merchandise the collection. And I will usually try to go back and pull pieces from my last collection that were top sellers for me and think about if there's a way that I can work them into this current collection. Any styles that didn't sell very well will not make a reappearance. And I think about why they didn't sell and I will try not to repeat those mistakes. I also do a little market research and try to reference current trends. This is also the point where I will start pulling out fabric swatches and I will get a good idea of what my budget and price points are gonna be for this particular collection. I will drape and draft the original patterns myself and then I will sew muslin mock-ups in order to communicate with production. I make technical flats and tech packs that I will eventually give to the production room that will be making my garments. This also will give me a general idea of how much fabric I'm going to need to make the samples. I usually go to the textile show in LA. I collect business cards, I get fabric headers and swatches and the prices, and then I head back to my studio and think about what really is going to work for me within my budget. I typically don't place orders at the textile show because I like to go back to the drawing board and make sure that I'm really purchasing what I need and I'm not just like super excited about all the pretty fabrics, which happens. The only time that I will usually place orders at the textile show is if it's from a vendor that I've worked with several times before and it's typically just going to be a reorder for me. Um, usually of something like a more basic fabric that um, is kind of like a staple that I always keep like for sale on my site. So I'll decide how much of each fabric that I'm going to be purchasing. And if I want to offer a certain style and several different colors of the same fabric, and then I'll make sure that all the fabrics will feel cohesive together. That's especially important if I'm going to be ordering lots of different fabrics from several different vendors. I will usually ask uh, what the lead time is to receive the fabric from them and how much fabric they have in stock of each color that I'm interested in purchasing. And then I will also ask them, and this was something I, I think I said in a past video, ask if they will sell you smaller quantities and that way you can use those smaller quantities to just cover your production. I do this so that I don't end up stuck with fabric with extra fabric if something doesn't sell or if once I sew it into a garment I actually don't like the garment in that fabric or I don't think the fabric will actually work for my customer. I know a lot of people complain about uh, things shrinking or color bleeding. This is also the time where I'm going to follow the care instructions that I would be giving to the customer so that when you purchase a dress from me you're not upset that it bled into your other clothes or it, you bought a large and now it's a small because you washed it. So this is kind of the time for that discovery. So I will usually meet with my production and discuss timelines for sample production and also turnaround time for actual production. Sometimes if I am a little tight on time and have budgetary restrictions, which like real talk, we all have budgetary restrictions, I will save myself a little money and I will do some of the samples myself. I would not recommend that to everybody, but it may be an option for you if you are a more experienced seamstress and if you think that your 
quality of sewing them yourself can match production quality. And I am still always multitasking. While all of this is going on, I'm going to be organizing and planning out my photo shoot, which means that I am scouting and securing a location. It means I'm hiring models, hair, makeup, obviously a photographer. And that means that, you know, do I need event insurance? There's a lot of things that you have to think about. So the works, there's a lot of work to do there. So after a super long day of shooting, the next thing I do is create promotional materials and maybe do a trade show or two for wholesale purposes. And then I will start putting items online for my direct to consumer purchases. So then I'll eventually do larger production quantities in order to fill my wholesale orders and just to have a little stock available for online orders. And of course there is marketing and sales promotion. So there you have it in a nutshell. You know, keep in mind that even though this sounds like a total breeze, every step in the process, with the exception of the photo shoot, can take weeks or even months to complete. Each step that I'm talking about here could probably be its own series of videos. And I probably in a future video will go into a little more detail, but I thought it might be helpful to just give a broad scope of what this bigger picture actually looks like. So I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions or want me to talk about something in particular, don't be shy. But otherwise, you know what to do. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.